Well, I'm not obviously Jane Covington, but uh, I'm a reasonable facsimile. So I'm your president today. Welcome to the May 12th, 2023 meeting of the Rotary Club of Brentwood. Roger Greenup will lead us in our invocation. John Kreft will lead us in the pledge and four-way test. And Steve Hammers will introduce our guests and visiting Rotarians. Roger, please. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for your grace and mercy. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the food we have today, for the good health we enjoy, our homes in this community and all those who serve us and protect us, keep us safe each and every day. We thank you for each member here. We appreciate and Thank you for their service, their attitude of service above self. And uh, we also remember our members who need your healing hand, Roger Reed, Dr. Gene Harmon, Bill McCarthy, Bob Bellenfont. And we also continue to pray for the family of Dr. Rick Finke, with peace and comfort for them. And finally, we pray for our nation, for our leaders. We pray that they would look to you for guidance and direction in all of their decisions. We ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Do please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, United States of America, to the Republic which it stands, one nation, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. And the four-way test. One. Truth. Two, three, will be better friendships. Four, will be beneficial to all concerned. And five. Okay. Please be seated. That is. That is. Okay. All right. Do does anyone have a update on? G, Dr. Harmon, Gene, is this, he's still in the hospital, Mike, or as far as you know? Okay. We have a couple of folks that we mentioned, did mention Roger Reed. He is, uh, definitely needs your prayers. Jennifer Shepard's mom, Bernie, died uh, the other day, right before her birthday. Um, so keep her in your prayers as well. Um, Larry Kane would like a minute with you all. Totally unrelated to what I'm going to talk about. If anybody knows where our four-way test sign is, please bring it back. <laughs> Somebody took it when we were at Tennessee Baptist Home, Children's Home, to take to Curry Andrews. Now, I don't know who took it, but they took that and they took the club banner. The banner came back and that did not. So if anybody maybe helped them carry it to their car or maybe put it in your car by mistake or something like that, I wonder if we are there at, at the... At Baptist Church? I wonder... Okay, we check. Check. Okay, cool. Good, thank you. Uh, our tournament is four weeks from from yesterday, so I know that sounds like a long time, but just thank you. What did I say? Oh, yeah. Just checking to see if you're listening. Thank you. You are listening. Good. Uh, four months from yesterday, which seems like a long time, but it also seems like a, a short time from when I announced this tournament two months ago. So uh, let's let's stay on track with what we're doing. We're doing fine. We've sold 47 sponsorships, which is, is awesome. Um, we have 17 new sponsors, which is really good. So congratulations to everyone that's got a new sponsor. However, just to remind you, last year we sold 188 sponsors. So we got 47 now. We had 188 last year, and we're looking to beat our goal that we did last year. So keep that in mind. There's a ton of sponsorships left to sell. You're going to see in just a minute. Um, the uh, let's, let's do that. Let's put the website up real quick. Oh, okay. So those of you who have not been to the website, please go to the website and get used to it. You've got it in several places in the package I gave you. 
When you pull the website up, stop right there. You're going to see three blue signs I want you to see. This is the first page you'll see. You'll see register now. You'll see donate now. And scroll down. And you'll see pay your invoice online. I've had questions about all of those in the last couple of weeks. So go back up. I sponsor was the one that was thinking. Okay. So the register now is where we're going to, not yet, is where we're going to. Not yet. <laughs> go back. Register now, we're going to look at in just a minute. That's where you go if you're going to buy a sponsorship or you want to see if a sponsorship is available. I had two calls this week from people who sold sponsorships that were already sold, so that's not good. You can get up current on that. The donate now has come up several times here recently. If you have someone that does not want a sponsorship, they just want to donate $200, and we had a $600 the other day, somebody didn't really want a sponsorship, just want to make a donation. I've had a discussion with someone who, who has someone who wants to give more than that, a pretty sizable amount, and they don't want to buy a sponsorship. They just want to donate to the club. They can go right there to donate now, and don't click on it, but click on that. It'll take them, walk them right through making a donation. Now, if they want to buy a sponsorship, register now. Click on that. That's all right. Scroll down and you will see, every, and this is current daily. So you can see everything that's sold out. We've got one platinum sponsor left at 5,000 and then everything else uh, in the first part is all sold. So if you're going to look at a, selling a sponsorship, those are gone. Then you get down here, you got cart path, side scoreboard, hole in one, premium hold, cart, those are all available. So you can go on there or your customer can go on there, your client and, and buy those. Uh, the Paul Harris sponsor is sold out. That's the player sponsor and the individual golfers. Uh, there are no spots available. It says one golfer, um, but then anyway, we're, we're full of golfers. We don't need golfers. So but that's, that's easy to use. It's got every information you ever want. The sheet that we send out every so often is only good that day. If somebody sells something that night, it's it's no good. This is good all the time. So use the website when you sell in there, when you want your client or your, your prospect to do that. Um, if you don't know who to call, look at your prospect list I gave you. Everybody has a list of, of potential sponsors. I guarantee you, you know, one, two, three, or four people on that list. I guarantee you. you just look at it and see. Uh, you got any questions, you call me, you can text me, you can email me, whatever, call me. Don't don't wonder about something and then not ask about it. And lastly, I'll ask this one more time. Did anybody sell a company called Centerfield of Franklin, a sponsor? <laughs> yeah. No, okay. All right, thank you. I've got that. They, they bought a $1,000 sponsorship, and I don't know who sold it. I hadn't, I hadn't taken anybody, uh, find anybody to take credit for it. So keep working, keep calling. If you need something, give me a call. Thank you. And I intentionally skipped order because I know you're next, but he's so important. Uh, I want to get him up he's here. He's far more important. I know he is. And the, I want to speak for late. Don't turn any money away. Make sure you get it. Now, Steve Hammers. All right. We've got two guests. I'd like to have Jeff Wood introduce his guest. <laughs> Jeff Wood. I keep getting that. I'm Jeff Brown. I'm married to Donna Wood. Oh. <laughs> but that's okay. I've Thank you, Mr. Wood. Work. Anyway, this is my wife, Donna Wood. She decided to join us today. I think in large measure, just to find out what I do when I just start writing my <laughs> Check it up on me. Donna, we're glad to have you. And Linus has a guest. Bob, stand up, please, if you would. This is my friend, Bob Thompson. He's back for the second time, uh, despite the fact that I didn't spend any time with him during his last visit and am not spending any time with him this time. He came back anyway. Bob, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So we'll do happy bucks. Who's doing happy bucks? Need a volunteer. Right, there, you, there you go. And Ms. Wood, uh, we will. We'll, we don't do the animal sacrifices until after the meeting. So. I'll just keep doing my role while I do happy bucks. Anybody happy? Somebody's got to be happy. Somebody could not be happy to watch me chew my role while you do this. Uh, glad to be back after a couple of weeks in India and Sri Lanka. As speaking of animal sacrifices, I'm sure there's a beef crunch. Who else is happy this afternoon? Mr. Wood, nothing from you? No? 
right. This uh, this is five just to pay up Mr. Treadway's bill. Where is Alan? Today? He's got to be happy. He's over there. Yeah, you got you got money, so you're 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 on a tab. You are you are running a credit balance, so. <laughs> So I was going to say Jeff's wife. I tell you what, I met her at pancake breakfast, and she is so nice. Uh, don't say anything about the Philadelphia Eagles, though. She, she is a typical Philadelphia. <laughs> okay. Any wow, anyone yeah. else this afternoon? No. Okay. All right. All right. Um, today, and Susie, correct me if I'm wrong, is the deadline to RSVP for the district conference. <laughs> Take another bite. <laughs> the club is paying for you to come to lunch next Friday because we are not going to be here next Friday. We are going to be at the district conference at the Franklin Marriott Cool Springs. So if you would like to come, be sure to sign up with the club. The registration is at one o'clock, ends the end of our meeting. If you want to come to other parts of district conference, you can register online through DACTB, and that registration deadline is tonight. So it's going to be great. Our speaker next Friday is going to be Doug Englund. Doug is a pilot, and he is also one of the ones that masterminded and flew the mission to uh, that ended up in the death of Osama bin Laden. So he had to be very interesting, especially because a lot of his information has recently been declassified so he can talk about it. Okay. So remember that the deadline for community grants is the 26th of May, okay? These are important. We It's up to $2,000 a piece. This is your chance to get your favorite charity some money. So make sure you get that put together and you know all the, the, the process of doing that, but we look forward to getting those in. Patrick, you had an announcement. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Um, if you would like to make your dues payments today, I've got the app here. I'll stay a few minutes after the meeting. I was here a few minutes early. A couple of you caught me out there. Thank you to all of you who, uh, been great to get your dues in as I roll out of this role and Jason rolls in in July, just trying to clean up uh, some past dues. And uh, if you have any questions about your bill, I have that information here too. So thank you very much. Okay. Are you hiding your ba baseball bat in the closet in case you need to break legs? <laughs> now he sends Bart King to do that. So um, any other announcements from anybody? Okay. Well, I'm going to introduce our speakers. Today, Jennifer Ruane and Ted Illichillian, or otherwise Smith and Jones, um, who we know. We got a pleasure. They are uh, fairly new club members. They've been in the club about three years. And um, so we're gonna, we're, we have, this is part of our little series here that, that Jane set up where we're having some Rotarians get up and tell you a little bit about uh, their lives, why they're in Rotary, what means what's important to them and why they're uh, helping us do the better things, as I like to say. Jennifer has three kids, two or, two or twins, okay. Um, she says so she's a very busy mom, but she makes time for Rotary. She uh, helped plan and shop for casino night. And actually, the food was really good there. You did a good job, that was great. Um, great sense of humor, obviously, if you have to, just be in this club. And uh, has a refreshing way of just getting things done without taking them too seriously. This all came from Jane Covington, by the way. But uh, I, I've, I've only, I think, if, if Jennifer, have we done, um, did you go down to Waverly? Have you done that? Okay, well, anyway, I thought you did. But anyway, I thought you'd done that. So, and then Ted is joined about two years ago. He's very consistent, been very uh, involved and uh He's uh, very active in the in the uh, Little Harpeth cleanup. Uh, he's even oh, he recruited Duke University Alumni Association to help with our Harper. Yeah, that's pretty good to get those guys. Uh, you can count on Ted for a friendly smile every Friday. Uh, I remember when I oriented you, I, I told you, uh, I said, this is a great club. You'll have a lot of fun. It's, I don't know if it's good for networking. Maybe it is, but but it's, you're going to have a blast here and working here. 
So we're going to start, I think, with Jennifer and come on up and give your spiel. So I was excited when Sybil asked me to speak today because it's been a minute since anyone's given me a mic. So I'm so happy to be up here. Um, so I looked in Club Runner last night. Club Runner says I've been a Rotarian for I think 18 years. I, there, I'm not even 18 years old, so I don't know how I could possibly be in a, been, been a Rotarian that long. Um, but a little bit about me, I didn't take notes. Uh, I just, I grew up in Western Kentucky, about 90 miles north of downtown Nashville, a little town by the name of Dawson Springs. I graduated from high school with 27 people and uh, our school was K to 12 and there wasn't even 500 people in the entire school. Um, and we were all on one campus, little Western Kentucky farming community. And um, it was it was great. I went to the University of Kentucky and I managed to cram four years into six there. It was awesome. <laughs> and um, I was, it, my claim to fame about that was I was the first one to go to UK for my little town in like 10 years or something. It was four hours away. Oh, it was so far, so far. Uh, I, we'd never even been to Lexington the day they dropped me off at the dorm. First time we'd ever even been in the city. Of course, you guys all know now to go to college or we travel and visit campuses and all sorts of stuff. So that was fun. Um, Doss, the reason I've not been to Waverly is that um, Dawson Springs was one of the towns that was taken out uh, last December 10th, so December 10th of 2021, and I've spent a fair amount of time. Um, I go as often as I can to help them. They are still in a major recovery phase. The historic downtown did not get demolished, but most of the residential areas did, so there's been a lot of displacement. The town is recovering nicely, but I still do go and help them, so I, I've been spending some time there, and I do help with the Rotary Club there as well. Um, they have a very small club, and a lot of people that I've known my whole life were part of that club, and so I've been able to help them, which is nice. So let's see, what else? In two weeks, I will have been married 29 years. Again, I'm not 29, so I couldn't have been married 29 years, but the paperwork says such, and my husband and I have had <clears throat> these great opportunities. Um, he, he, he was in the pharmaceutical business when he was working. He's retired now. And we lived on the West Coast for over 20 years. We lived in Seattle for a few years. We lived in Vancouver, BC, which there are still fingernail marks on the ground. I absolutely loved it there. We lived in Northern California, uh, Northern California for a few years. And um, three years ago, the year of COVID, um, we decided to move back. All of my family is still here. My extended family is in Western Kentucky. My only brother and his sons and wife, of course, are in Knoxville. My mom wasn't well at the time. And so it was just time for us to come home. So um, the West Coast was fabulous. Vancouver was great. When my husband took some time off about 15 years ago, we bought a boat. We spent a couple of years cruising around the Gulf Islands. We moored it at Salt Springs Island, if anyone knows that, that part of the world. Um, it is as much God's country as living here. And um, it was a fabulous couple of years. And then, uh, let's see, yeah. And then um, I was getting ready to turn 40 and we were floating around the Gulf Islands, living, living a great, beautiful, quiet life. It was so awesome. And I turned 40 and my head spun around on my neck and there the two of us were. And I said, you know, I love you, honey, but there's, there's got to be something else. We, we, we got to get off this 50 foot boat. We're going to kill each other. So um, one thing led to another. We, within a year and a half, uh, adopted newborn twins and um, boy, girl, we were very fortunate. We were uh, selected by a beautiful birth mother in Cincinnati, Ohio, and took them back to California because they were trained puppies because, you know, they were in the NICU for 30 days. They came home trained and ready to go. I thought, well, let's add another one. So two years later, Tristan came along and started screaming at me and he's still screaming, kind of, he's lovely, but then that was that. So we have three children at a more advanced age, I call it. <laughs> Many people uh, think I'm the grandmother when I roll in to school events. So 
those, those years were tough. My husband was in his, his early, late forties, early fifties at the time I was in my mid fifties. And I'll just say, when I look around this room, I'm going to say that most of you have either lived with or experienced menopause. I had three toddlers, three dogs, a 6,000 square foot house and four acres of property full on menopause. I was, okay. We all lived all except one dog. I had one dog that was 13 or 14 and she could, was blind and she followed me around and her little paws would click on the ground and she had to go. I love that dog, but she had to go. So everybody lived. I stayed married. It was awesome. So when my mom wasn't well, we decided to move back <clears throat> to the, this part of the country. And um, I joined this Rotary Club about, I started coming about 60 days before we shut down for COVID. I was actually inducted on Zoom. And then the kids started staying home all the time. So I could, couldn't even do Zoom at the time. So I'm glad to have been a part of Rotary. I was raised for service above self. My mother and my grandmother raised me. They were, they were service above self before service above self was a thing. I spent my life putting together um, nonprofit uh, events, even in in this little town and doing and continually serving and giving back. So I worked for many years in the swimming pool industry, meaning that I sold the chemicals to distributors and, and municipalities and whatnot that keep the water clear. We moved to Canada. I didn't have a green card. I came out on the other side of the green card doing events and conferences and setting up trade, trade shows and that kind of stuff, which I loved because I, I really enjoyed that. And now, once Peyton and Brayden and Tristan were born, I've um, been a full-time mom. I am looking for something part-time right now, if anybody has anything, just to keep myself busy. And um, let's see, what else? I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of three different clubs. Uh, I was, my first club was in New Westminster, British Columbia, which is right outside of Vancouver. I was very active there. I was in line to be president. Um, and my husband took a new job in Northern California about three weeks before I was supposed to go to pets. So I've been involved in, in a lot of diff different ways in Rotary. I give back to the community. I love to give back to the community and I love to be a part of Rotary. I think that we do something that I don't think any other civic club in this world can take on. And I'm passionate about it and glad to be here. And thank you, Sybil, for asking me to speak. Oh, that did it. Okay. Yeah, we're running all, we got guys running all over the place trying to shut that music off. Um, you're back on again? Is that coming from us or is that? It's coming from North Dakota. Is that it? Okay. And here you have a signal officer sitting up here and can't get, get the mic straight. Okay, so, Ted, you're next. Ella Chien. Thank you. Uh, this is what. Sybil, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, typically when I, when I go and then I have given several presentations, but I typically go, I have an agenda, I have an objective for the meeting and then this time Sybil said do whatever you want to do and then I'm like I don't know what to do I really I don't know what to do and then and then now I have to follow what Jennifer said this year so let's see what we can do yeah <laughs> uh, yeah that yeah we will talk about pause but not yeah so, so um so my name is Teddy Lynchelli and and uh it's actually it's Thiru that's what still a lot of people call me and it is a small part of a long name so Probably Michael Hinman has uh, traveled that part of the world where the southern part of India names are very long. So it took me 12 years to learn my own name. So, uh, so for, I'm sure everybody knows India where it is. And, and for those who don't know that, oh, what did I do? Okay. 
Uh, oh, I got it. And and that is the southernmost tip of India. And uh, one highlighted that's where my hometown is. That's where I was born. And um, we have we have two others primarily. It's hot and hotter most of the times, right? But I my hometown I was lucky to be in an area where they were. It was surrounded by two rivers and a few other water bodies. So we had a nice weather most of the times of the year. And then um, and then uh, I I moved from India to US. It was a long flight, almost 24 hours just in the flight, right? Um, I, I have flown in, within India, but that's the first trip outside of India. There's a long flight. And I landed in New York City, and then I moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania. So I took a job. I was not planning to move to U.S. by any means. I was working for an engineering company. I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. When I graduated, started working with a company, and a couple of years, they said, hey, how about you taking a uh, you know, couple of years of training in, in the U.S. and just come back and lead this division. So that's how I came in. I was never planned. I even twelve years ago when my mother passed away, even a few months before she was, you know, she was on the deathbed, and I was still telling her, I'll be back in a couple of years. And that's why the same thing I was telling her all the time. And that's the first time she said, no, I don't think so. so uh, it's, it's difficult for me when I say that, but that's how it was planned. It was a two-year trip that was planned, and then here we are. So... Uh, the job that I took, it put me to different places. And the first assignment was in South Dakota, Rapid City. So here is a guy that was at uh, 35 degrees Celsius, has now put under 30 degrees below zero, right? So that's the first, uh, you know, in addition to the cultural shock of moving to the US, the weather was a shocker. So I was, we will go out and then we will be standing and things will be sticking out of your nose and mouth and all those things. And then you come back and you know, warm up for a few minutes, go back and then do the thing. So, and then in 2009, I moved from Pennsylvania to Nashville, Tennessee, right? I took a job with a company in Franklin. It's another engineering company. And that's what brought me here. And ironically, my state in India is called the Tamil Nadu. So we abbreviated to TN. And then when we moved here, my wife thought I did it on purpose. Maybe. Um, and I've been here in Brentwood since then. So what keeps me ticking? Family, right? Obviously, we are all here uh, because of the family. So I have uh, two daughters and a wife. I, we are married almost 23 years now. And I love to travel. So I've been to 49 states, and there is only one state missing. So if anybody can guess what state it is, the last frontier is still missing. I'm trying to do it, I just... I don't know whether I want to cruise or fly, so it's been discussed for a while. Okay, all right, I'll do that. I was told between June and August is the place to plan, time to visit. So, and then I love to hike. I, I love hiking, and I'm sure for you who like to hike or walk, we are blessed with so many state parks within an hour of each other. And McMinnville area, the, um, you know, is my favorite place. Uh, I'll and then I am, my, my dad used to be a dean in a, in a college in, a, in a, you know, where my hometown was. So I was, you know, I will be going in the summertime with him to the, because my mom will get, try to get rid of me from home. He doesn't want me at home. So I was growing, growing up in this college environment. He was, a, he was a professor of zoology and biology. So I used to be in the lab and everything. He wanted me to become a doctor. And because of that lab, I decided not to be a doctor. So, so I, I decided to be an engineer. But my wife is a doctor. So. My, my dad's wish was kind of fulfilled. There is a doctor in the family, um, right? Uh, but, but I do believe education is the, uh, the only, you know, I, I grew in, you know, my, my grandparents were all uh, from the farming community. And I have been in the villages for a long time. I spent this my summertime. And, you know, we had a, our guest last week. She was expressing some concerns. And, and I, I could relate to a lot of those things especially when it comes to poverty and mental illness and, and depression. So I could see that. So I, I, I believe education is one way of doing it. So um, I, I used to serve in the board of an, a couple of nonprofits, education, especially a charter school uh, in Nashville area. And it opened me a lot of things about we are in Tennessee, we are in middle Tennessee, which is one of the richest places in Tennessee. And we just go to, you know, the mega area cluster and you could see poverty and education is how, how it is deterrent because of the power. 
Um, so I, 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 we started, uh, and I also am a founding board member of an, a school that we started uh, probably 12 years ago with, uh, it teaches my language. So we started with 23, 28 kids, and now we have over 150 kids that are still learning our language. So we are trying to, you know, they are here, they are born here, they are here, but we just want to show them that's their identity, see if they can continue talking their education. Um, and then, of course, you know, I work with several nonprofits here in, um, in the Brentwood and Franklin area. Rotary is one of the things. When I grew up, we saw Rotary and Lions Club as the primary things in my hometown. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, I'm very close to my office, very close to this place. So it was Rotary versus Lions. So here we are. And of course, Tom is the main reason. He, he, when we had the first interview, he was telling me why I shouldn't be giant. So here I am. And then I, I do manage IT and cybersecurity, helping local businesses. So let me quickly go through some pictures I got for you guys. So that one here, like I told you I was traveling, that was a photo. I just took a, a, a scan of that. That was a, you know, we didn't have digital photo cameras that much. So I was, you know, we were, I was in the college and we were supposed to do a, like a trip to an industrial facility. And that's our trip that uh, we just went to. We went to see Agra and uh, we were in front of Taj Mahal. And this is the, I, two weeks ago, I finished my first marathon hike um the savage gulf area we did the 26.2 mile in a day so that is that was that was a dream for a long time and i did, did that and then here they are in pennsylvania we, i used to have a buddy so we used to do a lot of pheasant hunting that's how i i you know those six seven months of gloom and doom that's how we passed through that we shot some birds there and then here uh, that's my daughter my oldest one in puerto rico and then that's when I hiked the Grand Canyon the first time. I'm going in a, in a few weeks again to hike the last trail there. And once in a while, I get to meet the local celebrities. Ultimate fighting. Brentwood Ultimate Fighting Championship there. He was, he was working with me on the Harpeth River cleanup. And then Pikes Peak and Grand Canyon again. And then uh, that's on the um, Appalachian Trail with my family. Hawaii. Um, Venice and a few other places. So quickly, um, my job as a, as a job, I, I, when I'm doing that, you know, we are talking about hacking and, and how cybersecurity is important. And, uh, you know, the hackers are motivated by four things, political motivation, financial, ideological, and then religious. So they could be doing hacking for anything, but we see more and more financial motivation with the small businesses here. So um, I don't can you, can you play this? Just want you guys to just listen to me. They're going to hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation. And basically, um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used for a later attack. Let's do it. Will you, <laughs> who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider and okay. see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number. So it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm going to log into our account for uses information. And I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, uh, email .com? Jessica gets access to my personal email address. If I needed to um, add our bigger daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing this? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm not on there either. So I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a big social security number. Five one two seven. To set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's no password on my account right now. Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. 
I'll get her that after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, so what are we talking about today? So when we were talking with the folks that are running this conference, so, we asked so about what you kind of saw that. Um, as you see, she hasn't really, really got into anybody's computer or anything. She just used a social engineering to get some information. And so when, when somebody's hacking like this, they actually look around everything. They look at your Facebook, they look at everything. So it's not just one simple thing. They do it. Uh, so, so I just, I just wanted you guys to know like how easy it is for somebody to get the information about somebody. So, um, you know, you, you, we all do, we all do banking and other, other online things. So a uh, few things I want you guys to think about is always use a unique password. Don't use the same password for everything, because if one account gets hacked, then they can access everything else. Right. So use, use different passwords and a stronger password. For example, like I don't use anything less than 30 characters. So, you know, try to do something like that. Yeah. Use a password manager for that. So I don't, I don't like to, you know, just remember that thing. So please use a password manager. Uh, there are some free tools available as well. And then don't share passwords, please. Even, even within the household, don't do that because you don't know what they are doing with that password, right? They can give it to some innocent friend and they think they're innocent. And then, you know, the phishing scams are coming in, you know, any call, any SMS, any email that comes in, if you don't recognize it, just don't click on it. If, if, if a payment is pending from somebody, they will call you. You don't have to click on the link to say if they're, if, if you really have to pay somebody, right? Um, use an antivirus software, you know, uh, if you are using computers extensively, especially if you're uh, using for banking purposes. And then, you know, the public Wi-Fi, be very careful. And that I always tell people, you know, if you have a cell phone, use that most of the times. So, you know, if you go to any coffee shop or anything, do not do any banking transaction while you're sitting in the coffee shop. Surfing, internet is fine, but don't do it. Um, you know, even even things like Facebook can get your information out there, and that's how they get you. So, I'll, that's all I have. Thank you. So, now's the time for questions for our two speakers today, for Ted and Jennifer. I enjoyed that um, presentation about cybersecurity. I work in network topology and engineering, so it's you know, I'm one of those fiber to the home guys. So it's obviously very important in my business. Do you know the etymology of the background of the term "vishing"? Where they came? Where that comes from? That's what it is. Basically, you know, people just use the any voice device to just connect with anybody. You know, phishing is typically when you have a, a URL or something, that's kind of the word, that's where it's coming. Questions? I have a question while I'm going in this direction. So what was the climate like in your hometown of Southeast India? Um, so it'll be typically ranging somewhere between um, 80 and 95 degrees. Typical. Yeah, with, with uh, de depending on the region, you can expect humidity to be, to be between 70 and 90. Yeah. Thanks, Saru. That was awesome, especially that baby crying. I mean, that's unbelievable what they can do. Um, my question is, you said use a password manager. So the one that is on Apple, like in the settings, is that the one that you kind of save your passwords to or what is a password manager? Yeah, yeah, you can. That's a good question. Uh, you can use Apple Keychain. I think that's one of the things, but it is it primarily works with the Apple devices. So I would use something like Keeper Password or or One Pass. Those are devices. Uh, those are those are apps you can buy. And you know, one I think one device is free. Most of them are giving it a free, but you can buy a multiple devices because what I would recommend is you install it on your phone and computers and everywhere. So you you remember only one password. That's the master password. You don't write it anywhere. You just remember it. And then everything else is stored there. And then also another important thing is always enable two-factor authentication for your accounts. That's the vital one. I'm sure the banking sector will not let you set up an account now without a two-factor two authentication. And instead of SMS, if you can use an authenticator like Microsoft or Google Authenticator, that would be another way. Um, there are ways they are getting into all those things, but these are the deterrents for them to stop getting into you. So especially the 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 older population is being scammed very easily during the IRS time. So, you know, just, uh, you know, just let them know not to get any phone calls because that's where the wishing is coming from. They just call and then 
you know, we, we, I recently I got a prospect that I'm working with. She got scammed $25,000. Somebody calling her as help desk. Jennifer, I have a question for both of you. We'll start with Jennifer. What was the, um, I hear many times when people are trying to adopt uh, children, how hard it can be. Can you, like, how was your, talk a little bit about your uh, your journey there. So when we decided to adopt, um, when we got married, we said that we didn't want to have children, you know, and then, like I said, I turned 40. For us, when we looked at all the options, um, fostering is de definitely a, a very heartfelt way to go. I, I don't think I'm built for that. That's why, like, I, I, I can't go see a bunch of babies. I can't go to the humane shelter because I'll come home with all the dogs and the cats, right? I'm, I, I'm one of those. So we did a lot of research and decided to take the private route. And much to our surprise, I, I figured with the age that we were, it was going to be tough, um, you know, because I, I think when you think you're going to go through a private adoption, for me anyways, I thought, there would be a high school cheerleader and a football quarterback that got in trouble and was looking to adopt. That is not the case um, that they said, <clears throat> because um, you, we were the age that we are those young people's parents and they're mad at their parents, that adoptive families um, would look at, um, the, the birth mothers would look, would be older and they were, they, they were single mothers. So it only took us, I, I had children in less than nine months, both times. Um, so we were very fortunate. We used an agency out, out of Ohio. So I did not face any of that. We were in, in a position that we could go through a private adoption. So we did, we, we were very lucky to be chosen so quickly. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. And for Ted, um, what's one thing or maybe two, that when you, before you came to the States, you thought it was one way, like what was a myth that was busted? Like you were sure that like Americans did this, or maybe it's when you were in, uh, I forget, did you say North or South Dakota? And then when you came to Tennessee, like, I'm just curious if things like you either, you thought we did one thing one way and that makes sense. I think, you know, during that time when we were traveling, we didn't have internet or anything like that. So any, anybody, when you, when you move from one state to another state, they will always make some jokes about them. You know, when I was moving from Pennsylvania to South Dakota, they, they said I had to live in caves or something like that. I don't know why they said that. I didn't have anything, but that's that's kind of the thing. And then when I finally moved from Allentown to Nashville and almost all of my friends, they thought that I will be moving back very quickly because I can't stand that for a, for more than a, more than six months. That's that's kind of the thing. So at the time, I couldn't sell my house. So it was on, on rent for a, for a year. And they thought that's the reason why I'm keeping it. That was the rumor around. So yeah. So there's always some misconception about some some somebody, you know. So Can you go, Jay. So Ted will be telling on myself a little bit with this one, but it was kind of funny. I thought I was the victim of fishing or spear fishing. About a month ago, I received a phone call at work and person on the other end, I could hear something in the background might have been a strange noise or dog or something. So it already didn't sound quite legit. But they uh, said, sir, we noticed some uh, potentially fraudulent transaction on your credit card. And, um, you know, we need to talk to you about that. But before I do that, I've got to get some security questions that I've got to ask you in order to do that. I don't think I really recognize the name of this bank. This doesn't sound right. And I said, we're already off to a bad start, but go ahead. <laughs> and she asked me a couple of questions, one of which was, uh, I need to know who your organization's, um, who, who your purchasing card manager is or whatever. I said, all right, that's enough. And I knew I was getting scammed right there, okay? And they caught me at a weak moment. I used some choice language and hung up the phone because I didn't like the idea of getting scammed. You know, I was like, oh, you, that really put me off. And so I thought, well, there could be others in my organization. They're getting the same phone call and they're, they're, they're trying to hit us. So I started to bang out an email to everybody. The more I got to thinking about it, I'm like, is there any chance that that was legit? <laughs> so I called that uh, purchasing card manager and I said, just so you know, I got a phone call. Why don't you make sure that they weren't really trying to get a hold of me? He calls me back and says, no, that was legit, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you told us somebody who was trying to help us. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I would rather have that. I would rather have that than the other way. 
and and the one of the other things they always do is when somebody is calling you even if they are identifying as a bank or something they will ask you for the security questions which are standard security questions and they don't know whether the answer is correct because they are collecting that information from you and then they will use it when they are trying to log in as you because those are the security questions that you will be giving in other other location so typically what i would recommend for my clients is if they are getting a call you tell them give me your number i'll call you back you don't call them right away you just want to make sure whether it is a number that you know listed on the internet or something like that and the second thing is you when you are doubt like that when you are in doubt like that just give them a wrong answer when they ask for a security question and if they tell you hey jay that's not correct then that's the way to check whether they are also correct because you know it's like public wifi you take any public wifi they will ask you for a they will set up in such a way it will ask you for a password right you think it's a secure network but it is designed to any password you give it will take it it's the same thing they do it and they are calling you so just be aware of that the computer can do anything they want them to do no i'm i'm very i am very glad you read that i and i don't hear that that often so that's good so jennifer um so you got this little small town kentucky twang going and you've got a big uk degree right so how did that play out in northern california well i i live here now <laughs> and <clears throat> my my degree is actually from western i spent two semesters at western i had a family illness and western only put me about an hour and 10 minutes from home i don't i hardly remember being in bowling green that was in the late 80s so um i i, I had an apartment but I, I but it didn't fare so well for me <clears throat> my husband grew up in bristol and is a wake forest graduate and that didn't go over so well either <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it was it was uh different do we have any other questions? Time for one more. I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, tell us about the school you found. Where is it? And what's the name? So I get passionate about this school. So this this school is called Tennessee Tamil Academy. Tamil is the language that I speak in uh, India. So uh, for those who don't know, Anu, Anu might know this, but uh, yeah, so, so she she was born in my home state. So um uh, so this language is over 2000 years old and it's one of the uh, classical languages recognized by unesco it has over 247 alphabets in it so think about that for a second so yeah um so so the the, the, the we are concerned like any any anywhere else in the world as you know africa used to have a lot of dialects and not pretty, pretty much languages but they are dialects because there is no written form there used to be more than 2000 probably two centuries ago and now they are down to like you know you can count with two two hands so uh, they are speaking now english and french primarily in, uh, in africa uh, so but uh, we we that you know we migrated from india for a, for a while and we wanted to just make sure our kids are you know able to learn this language and that's what we did so um the um, um east brentwood uh, presbyterian church is the one that gave us the opportunity to start that class so that's the facility we were using so john hilly is of mine uh, he helped me to grow that from you know we were six of us we started this school 28 kids primarily it started for our own kids you know uh, which they didn't do they graduated but they don't talk very much at all they don't they understand and then they will use it against to their advantage if i say something really harsh in the language they will say oh i didn't understand what you're saying so uh, so now you have to repeat again and then explain in everything and then and then they will they will still trick me by saying i don't understand your accent is so weird so you know all those things so anyway um so now we have over 150 kids that are graduating and and uh, I mean, total but every year we we graduate about 20 to 30 kids and uh, one of the things i'm i'm talking to actually when uh, when carol birdsong was here i was talking to her too is they're trying to see if uh, the uh, i talk to you on that is the Williamson County, they can recognize that, uh, you know, accredit that. Uh, it, we, we got it accredited, but recognize that as a second language or, or, a, or a different language. And so these kids get a credit for that, and then they can do something in the college. So that's what we are doing. Um, yeah, I've been, a, I've been a board member on that for 12 years, and we are trying to collect some people. 
and the school is open for everybody the challenge is that if somebody that don't have anybody speaking the language at home they can learn that that's the problem so it's a you know we encourage you know in one of the neighborhoods where several of our community members are living there is um, a couple of people that uh, they don't speak the language and they are from here originally and they actually express their interest because the kids are all talking they they pick up the words and all those things and i said you can actually send them i mean but how, how are you going to do the home that's the problem anyway thank you for asking that thank you guys so are you from are you from the same area as the new you're from the same area yeah the bangalore yeah right okay interesting yeah sounds like a great community grant just saying okay um a couple of things about next meeting um district governor eddie allred's coming next week so we oh i'm sorry well the next meeting here how about that yeah don't come there oh give me that give me that money back from it happy bucks anyway okay the next so the, it's the next meeting that we have here right is him is him no well see so y'all fool me you put you put it so I, there was i looked in club runner okay all right this will probably be the last time i'm acting president well this so the next time we meet it'll be somebody will be here and it'll be it'll be very interesting so there's a brief club uh board meeting afterwards that uh, steve wants to have to vote on somebody to let in and uh, i want to just say thank you to our visitors for coming and being with us today and is there any other thing yes Fiftieth anniversary planning committee, and yes, Rob. Yes. Scales Elementary. Okay. Yeah. Either see Roger or email him and let him know. Yeah, it'd be fun. And we need to put up, put away the tables, and I think. We're supposed to now put the chairs back in the room, right? Okay. Oh, leave them where they are. Stack them up. Okay. But we don't have to put them back in the room. I mean, I'm batting a thousand today. All right. Well, have a good weekend, everybody. And uh, let's go forth and do the better things. <laughs>